Just like oil, natural gas is a fossil fuel found where ancient organisms decomposed. It can be shifted in pipelines, but they are expensive and impractical for crossing oceans. Instead, engineers had to work out how to transport it by ship. That's a challenge when you remember that natural gas ignites at any air temperature found on Earth. To learn how you transport gas safely, I went to a high security research facility in northern England. This is a blast-proof chamber, a sort of industrial-scale oven. Right, well, this device here is a supply of gas up through this tube here. This is an igniter, it'll create a spark, light the gas, and it'll burn. It's got a lot of gas, a lot more than you're used to at home, but don't worry, this place we're in can take it. This is a specialised blast testing facility. They use it to test industrial safety equipment on a massive scale, so it'll be okay. Nevertheless, I think I'll get out while we light it. Since someone had left the oven door off, we had to retreat to a safe distance. Cue the spark. Five, four, three, two, one, release gas. That's just a few litres of gas. Imagine a cargo of many millions of litres that could be ignited by the tiniest of sparks. That cargo has the energy equivalent of 55 atomic bombs. Spilling it could be a massive disaster. But there has never been any major accident, and the operators plan to keep it that way. Fortunately, there's a simple solution. Turn the gas into a liquid. As a liquid, it can't catch fire. And what's more, it takes up much less space. If the cargo were in gas form, the tanker would need to be impossibly big. It would have to be 600 times more voluminous, which would make it 10 times longer than this ship. Two and a half thousand meters, a mile and a half. To make the gas liquid, you chill it to minus 162 degrees Celsius. That's nearly twice as cold as it ever gets in Antarctica. But it only has to warm a little bit to turn back into highly flammable gas. So the crew are ultra cautious with their volatile cargo. As I found out when I went on board a fully laden tanker. As a liquid, it won't explode, nor will it burn. But the operators of LNG carriers can't take any chances with safety. So to avoid even the remotest risk of igniting any gas vapor, electronic devices are not allowed anywhere near those tanks. If I want to go forward from here, the bridge at the stern, I can't even wear a microphone. So uh, it's got to go. There you go. Neither can I take my telephone, my camera, and certainly not a TV crew beyond the bridge. They take no chances with this precious cargo. If you could hear me, I'd be saying that under my feet is a tank exactly the same as the one I climbed inside earlier. It's one of four full of ultra-cold liquid. That's an awful lot of natural gas on these ships. Keeping it as super cold liquid is the first and best line of defense. But what if any of the cargo warmed up and turned back into gas? The consequences would be dire. So there is a second line of defense. Normally the cargo is the other side of these walls. 
tens of millions of litres of it. And remember, that's in liquid form. Expand it into gas, ready to use, and it's billions of litres. And if any of the liquid made its way and leaked out and turned back into vapour, well, that could be a big problem. But it doesn't, thanks to a pre-war mail plane. In the 1930s, Empire Flying Boats delivered mail and passengers from Britain to Australia in 700-mile hops. They couldn't cross the Atlantic until they were able to take on fuel during flight. Nowadays, we take mid-air refueling for granted. But aviation fuel, just like natural gas, is highly flammable. A single spark when the refueling pipe makes contact and, well, it's kaboom. Bingo. What aviators needed was something to stop an explosion if there was a spark. What they needed, in fact, was noxious air. That's the name Daniel Rutherford gave nitrogen when he first isolated it in 1772. There might be lots of nitrogen around in the atmosphere, and there is a lot, but in its pure state, we can't breathe it. Sadly, it took a dead mouse in the container of the stuff to make that particular scientific advance. But the point here is nitrogen is an inert gas. It doesn't react readily with anything at all. And more importantly, it stops fuel combining with oxygen if there's a spark. Ignition is impossible if there's enough nitrogen around. Fires can't breathe nitrogen either. And that's a claim that just needs to be put to the test. So, time to fire up the industrial oven once again. This time with nitrogen inside it. First, it's sealed to contain the toxic gas safely. Nitrogen on. I get to watch from inside a special canopy to the side. A meter shows how the oxygen level drops as nitrogen replaces the normal air around the igniter. Remember, the theory is that gas won't burn unless there's enough oxygen present. That 10 means there's hardly any oxygen in the chamber. It's now mostly nitrogen. I know the science, I know the physics, I know this should work, but suddenly I'm strangely nervous. Maybe it's just the drama of the surroundings. Right, if we're ready to do this, let's kill the nitrogen supply. OK, let's have the spark on then, please. This is the igniter. No gas in there yet, remember. So very soon we'll see the sparks at the top of the funnel. Let's have a look. There they go, that's the spark. Smoke on then, please. Now, the smoke is purely an indicator here, because otherwise we won't be able to see when the gas starts flowing. Right now, no gas going in, you can see the smoke. As soon as the gas starts, it'll pull the smoke up through that funnel. The chamber is full of nitrogen. The spark is firing. We can have the gas on then. And at that point, the only thing stopping ignition has to be the nitrogen. There goes the gas. Look at it, you can see where the smoke's coming out the top. That's been pulled through by the gas. That's the same gas we saw burning earlier. And yet with the nitrogen in there, look at that. Nothing. Do you know what? I find that strangely comforting. Science tells you it should work, but there it is working. Look at that. Gas charging in there, the nitrogen quashing it. It can't ignite, it can't burn. Nitrogen also protects gas tankers and mid air refueling. A quick squirt of nitrogen down refueling pipes removes any risk of explosion. Thanks to nitrogen, an Empire flying boat made its first transatlantic flight back in 1938. 
on gas tankers, the potentially poisonous nitrogen is safely sealed inside the gas tank insulation. This thin layer of aluminium, almost foil, is the outermost skin. But obviously, if I were to poke my finger through it, it wouldn't go straight into a tank full of tens of millions of litres of liquefied natural gas. On the other side of the aluminium, there's a layer of insulation that's critically to keep the temperature low. Then there's the aluminium tank itself. But that layer of insulation isn't just about temperature. It's porous and it's been steeped in nitrogen. So if there is a problem in the tank, nothing can burn. There's no oxygen. It's inert.